welcome viewers welcome to the new lesson from dr arts biology if you did not subscribe the channel you can just click on the subscribe button and bell icon welcome students so far we were we were discussing about uh, the structure of mitochondria with a special reference to metabolism and uh, introduction to oxidative phosphorylation now let us see the two parts of oxidative phosphorylation in detail in that the first part that is nothing but electron transport chain or electron transport system or respiratory chain okay so we will be in this lesson we will be discussing about uh, that particular topic electron transport system so we know that we cannot complete the electron transport system within one hour or half an hour of lesson so what we will make we will be just dividing this lesson into two or three part so ensure that you are watching all the part of electron transport system and you are learning the complete electron transport system because we have to discuss each and every component of electron transport system in detail then only you will understand what is happening within the electron transport system so it may take time so i will be just uploading video of maximum 20 or 30 minutes so we have to divide the electron transport system into parts so you have to watch that different parts of electron transport system okay part a part b part c etc so in that way it will be going on ensure that you are completely watching the electron transport system clear so let us see the electron transport system so how can you define electron transport system so we can just say that uh, it is the oxidative or the first part of oxidative phosphorylation where electrons are transferred from reducing powers such as NADH and FADH2 through a series of electron carriers in respiratory chain so that a proton gradient can be created to support the synthesis of ATP by ATP synthase enzyme. So that is the definition of electron transport chain. So revise the video and uh, learn that definition so that it will be helpful for you to define electron transport system for tomorrow or as an introduction for essay question. In electron transport system, we can see two types of components. So what are they? The mobile component and the immobile component. So immobile component means that are fixed within the inner mitochondrial membrane. They are not moving. They are fixed. They will not be changing their place. So immobile complexes are there. And second one is mobile complexes that act as carriers. They can move from one complex to another. That is what mobile complexes or mobile component or mobile carriers means in electron transport chain. So there are two components, the immobile and the mobile. In the immobile part, there are four complexes. We can just successively call it as complex 1, complex 2, complex 3 and complex 4. So these are the complexes in electron transport chain. So what is the first complex? It is NADHQ oxidoreductase. NADHQ oxidoreductase is the complex 1. From the name itself, we can see that it is nothing but an enzyme complex only. And from the name itself, we can predict the function of this particular enzyme. What is that? NADHQ oxidoreductase. So we can just say NADH undergo oxidation. Q undergo reduction. What is meant by Q? It is nothing but the coenzyme Q. Coenzyme Q, ubiquinone. It will be just undergoing reduction. NADH is undergoing oxidation. So that is the function of complex 1. So it will be oxidizing NADH and it will reduce the coenzyme Q. So that is about the first complex. Now second complex is succinate dehydrogenase. Or we can say succinate Q reductase. That is a complex 2. Okay. This complex 2, from the name itself, we can see that uh, it will be oxidizing FADH2 and it will be reducing Q. Why you have learned about this particular thing? Hope you remember the step in glycolysis. Where 
succinate. What is this particular thing? Succinate is converted into fumarate by undergoing oxidation where FADH2 will be formed. And that FADH2, we have discussed that the, it is a part of electron transport system and all. So, hope you remember that particular thing. So, this is a part of actually the Krebs cycle and this produces FADH2 and at the same time it oxidizes FADH2 to reduce the coenzyme Q. Clear? Now moving to the third enzyme or the third complex, the complex 3. So it is Q cytochrome C oxidoreductase. We have learned this name and function from the name itself. So in the same way Q cytochrome C oxidoreductase. So Q is undergoing oxidation and cytochrome C is undergoing reduction. So, it is actually giving the oxidation or support, uh, catalyzing the oxidation of coenzyme Q and the reduction of cytochrome C. Actually, what is happening here? You have to keep in mind, from the complex 1 and complex 2, the cytochrome Q, coenzyme Q will be collecting electrons. When it collects the electron, it undergoes reduction. You can see here, reduction of Q. Okay, then it will be delivering that electrons to the complex 3. When it delivers, when it gives off electron, what will happen? It is oxidized. That's why in this it is Q undergoing oxidation. So it is accepting, the complex 3 is accepting electron from the Q. Okay, so that's why it's undergoing oxidation. And complex 3, what that complex 3 will be doing with that electrons received from the Q? It will be just giving it to the cytochrome C. That's why cytochrome C is undergoing reduction. Okay, so that is it. You have to keep in mind coenzyme Q accepts two electrons from complex 1 and complex 2 and it delivers that two electrons to complex 3 separately. Okay, it will not collect the four electrons from together. Instead, it will be collecting two electrons at a time from either complex 1 or complex 2. And it will be just delivering it to the complex 3. Now the last complex, the complex 4, that is cytochrome C oxidase. Cytochrome C oxidase. From the name itself we can see that what is doing this? It is just oxidizing cytochrome C by accepting electrons from it. We know that uh, cytochrome C is a carrier of electron between complex 3 and 4. So it will accept electron from complex 3, reduction. Then it gives off electrons to the complex 4 oxidation. That's why the enzyme cytochrome C oxidase. The complex 4 is known as cytochrome C oxidase. So it oxidizes the cytochrome C. Now what this complex will be doing with that electron? It will be just giving it to the oxygen. You are aspiring. You are aspiring to take up the oxygen. For what purpose you are taking oxygen in? Is just to accept this electron from cytochrome C. Okay, just to accept this electron from cytochrome C, that's why you are breathing to take up oxygen. That is the what is why the aerobic organisms are known as aerobic. Because the final electron acceptor in aerobic organism is oxygen. To provide the oxygen, you are breathing. So cytochrome C will be delivering ox, uh, electrons to the complex 4. Complex 4 will be delivering that electron to the oxygen. As a result, water molecules will be released. So these are the four immobile complexes. When we are discussing this, we have already discussed the mobile complexes also. So mobile complexes coenzyme Q carry electrons, two electrons at a time from complex 1 or 2 to complex 3. And cytochrome C carries only one electron at a time. And it will be carrying that electron from complex 3 to the complex 4. Okay. So that's about different the components involved in the electron transport chain. So you have to ensure that uh, you are having the idea that these complexes are organized uh, within the inner mitochondrial membrane. Okay, inner mitochondrial membrane, all these components organized. Clear? Now let us discuss each component in detail and what is happening at uh, each component. And that is actually the process of electron transport chain. Clear? So, we can just move to the complex one.
So what is happening at the complex one? So keep in mind we are going to discuss the mechanism of electron transport chain or working of electron transport chain by taking each component in detail. So now we are at complex one. What is happening at the complex one? Let us see that. So before that, uh, when you are drawing the figure, keep in mind that uh, you are just taking one full page of your notebook and you are drawing the membrane at the center of that particular page holding the notebook in horizontal plane okay so if your notebook is like this you have to make it like this so that more space will be there in the horizontal plane clear then only you can just complete the figure because i will be just drawing each figure one by one but you can just draw it on the same line clear so i will be just drawing it here and next figure when i draw you can just draw it here Clear. So it should be in that way. So make sure that you are drawing the figure in a one full page, placing that particular notebook in a horizontal plane. Clear. So let us see the electron transport system. The first part of the complex one. The complex one is actually an inverted L-shaped structure. It is having an inverted L shape. You can find an inverted L shape where the horizontal arm is lying within the inner mitochondrial membrane. The thing that you can find in the red is actually the lipid bilayer of inner mitochondrial membrane and this is the cytosolic side and this is the matrix side. We have discussed it in when we discussed about the structure of mitochondria. Clear? So it's having inner, sorry, L-shaped, inverted L-shaped structure where horizontal arm is placing within the membrane. This particular enzyme complex is having different subcomponent or subunit they are FMN, we have discussed about it, flavin mononucleotide and then iron sulfur complexes, three iron sulfur complexes, okay. Actually what this particular complex will be doing? Oxidation of NADH and the reduction of coenzyme Q. So let us see the reaction. So this particular complex one will be oxidizing NADH plus H plus into NAD plus releasing two electrons okay releasing two electrons into the complex and uh, the two electrons will be first accepted by FMN flavin mononucleotide from there it will be just moving to iron sulfur clusters FES clusters and finally it will reach the coenzyme Q okay so when it reaches this, when it passes through the iron sulfur complexes, the iron component will be just reduced on accepting and oxidized on giving electrons. So it will be just shifting from ferric to ferrous. Okay, so this Fe component, iron component will be just shifting from ferric, ferric to ferrous and then ferrous to ferric. Ferric to ferrous when it accepts the electron and for us to for it when it gives off the electron. So in that way the electrons will be passing through these iron sulfur clusters and finally it will be reaching to the Q. So you can see within the membrane a Q pool. Q pool means coenzyme Q pool. That large number of coenzyme Q will be present within the membrane. So that is what meant by the Q pool. Okay. So the Q, the oxidized form of coenzyme Q, otherwise known as the ubiquinone. Oxidized form is known as the ubiquinone and that will be just going and binding with the complex 1. And it will accept the two electrons from iron sulfur complexes. So these two electrons will be accepted from the iron sulfur complexes. As a result, it will accept 2H plus from where this H plus is coming, you can see, okay, and uh, as a result it will be converted into QH2. The QH2, it is known as the ubiquinol, that will leave the complex and it will just enter into the Q pool. Okay, so that is actually the reaction that is happening. Simply, complex 1, oxidize NADH and accept 2 electron from it. The accepted electron will be first reaching the FMN part of the complex one. 
then it moves through three iron sulfur clusters and finally reaches to oxidized form of coenzyme Q ubiquinone that is bonded to the enzyme. Then the ubiquinone will be getting reduced to ubiquinone and leave the complex and enter into the Q pool. Clear? Now, during this process, complex 1 will be pumping 4H plus 4 protons out of the matrix into the cytosol. That means this 4H plus is now there in the intermembrane space, the cytosolic side of inner membrane. And it is pumped from the mitochondrial matrix. So what we can say finally, the oxidation of NADH plus H plus by the complex 1 created a proton gradient of 4 across the inner mitochondrial membrane. Clear? Now let us move to the complex 2. What is happening at the complex 2? So remember, you have to draw the complex 2 here only. Okay, so here itself we have to draw the complex Q. Clear? So don't forget that you don't have to separately draw. Instead, continuously you just draw it. And I am not drawing that because I don't have any space there in the board to completely draw the and their complex 4 and 2 complex in mobile, mobile complexes. Clear? So let us move to the complex 2. So complex 2, we know that the name is succinate Q reductase or succinate dehydrogenase enzyme. We have learned this particular enzyme as part of the Krebs cycle. Hope you remember so. Okay. So in Krebs cycle, we know that uh, the succinate is converted to fumarate by undergoing the oxidation process. As a result, uh, the FAD plus get reduced to FADH2. Okay, this enzyme catalyst, catalyst, this reaction is catalyzed by the enzyme succinate dehydrogenase that is nothing but the complex 2 of electron transport chain. Clear? So, FADH2 is now with the coenzyme, sorry, the sub complex 2. This complex 2, what will happen suddenly on forming that FADH2 quickly, what will, it will be oxidizing FADH2 back to FAD. As a result, two electrons will be released. That two electrons will be reaching the iron sulfur cluster of complex 2. And from that iron sulfur cluster, it will be reaching the coenzyme Q. As a result, the oxidized coenzyme Q, that is ubiquinone, will get reduced to ubiquinol QH2. And it will enter the Q pool. And it will convert back. What will happen in the next step? QH2 will be getting oxidized and releasing two electrons to the complex 3 and it is coming back as the ubiquinone Q. So this is the reaction that is happening at the complex 2. So what you can say? Complex 2 is the second complex in the electron transport chain or respiratory chain or respiratory series where it is catalyzing one of the steps in Krebs cycle where succinate is oxidized to fumarate getting FAD plus reduced to FADH2. This FADH2 will soon get oxidized back to FAD, releasing electrons, two electrons, to the iron sulfur cluster of the complex 2. From this iron sulfur cluster of the complex 2, it will be just going and giving it to the transfer to the coenzyme Q oxidized state, that is ubiquinone. As a result, ubiquinone is converted to reduced coenzyme Q, that is ubiquinol. And this ubiquinol will enter the Q pool. Okay, then it will be just proceeding the reaction, transferring electrons good to the complex 3. So that's about the complex 2. So this is complex 2 and this is complex 1. Okay, so what is the difference that you can see here? Did you notice any difference between complex 1 and complex 2? Both are transferring two electrons to the coenzyme Q. But what is the difference? Difference is there in the transport of 4H plus by the complex 1. You cannot find any proton that is transported by the complex 2. So complex 2 is not involved in any transport of protons out of the matrix into the cytosol. That's why you can find that uh, the energy released from NADH is more than the energy released from FADH2. We have learned in energy balance sheet that uh, NADH 
is equal to 2.5 ATP and FADH2 is equal to 1.5 ATP. 1 ATP is less. The reason is complex 2 is not transporting any proton. As a result, it is not creating any proton gradient. Due to the less proton gradient created, less energy can be formed from FADH2. Hope you got the concept clear. Okay, so let us move to the what is happening with the coenzyme Q and complex 3. Clear? So let us move to the next session. So it will be discussed in the part B of this particular electron transport chain. Clear? Mm -hmm.